when you when you came down too, and we were talking real quick because you know you, you did a lot of stuff in New York for a lot of years. You moved to New York in '96, and you found your footing there. Fifty Five Bar is that place that so many great musicians from the New York area. You said creative music, the lots of great blues come out of there, jazz fusion and like experimental kind of stuff. If I if and when I go to New York, that is a place I have to hit. Oh yeah, and you check must. out some live yeah. music, man. Um, like Donnie right. McCaslin and Mark Giuliano. Like uh, that was, I think, a video I saw on YouTube once, and I was like, "What the fuck is this? This is unbelievable music." And it's only recently I realized that that was the Fifty Five Bar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got to go there, man. Yeah. That's that's it's a dive. It's just a dive <laughs> bar. That hasn't been clean since, you know, probably 1890. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's well, so. awesome. I mean, I love the 55 bar. That's my home away from home. Um, I spent many a night there. But I think the McCaslin band with, with Mark and mm -hmm. Tim LaFave, I, I'm pretty sure if I have the, the story right, that's where David Bowie heard them. That's right. And asked them to, you know, do the Black Star record. Exactly. I'm pretty sure that's where he heard them. Mm -hmm. um, that's where Donald Fagan and Walter Becker heard me. Really? For the first time. They came down. It's it's kind of one of those places that, um, I mean, the history there is incredible. You know, I mean, everyone's played there. Mike Stern has a, um, a regular Monday, Wednesday residency when he's in town. Okay. He plays there every, if it's still the same, it's been a little while since I've been in town, but mm -hmm. he'll play Monday, Wednesday. Uh, I know his wife, Lainey Stern, had a Tuesday night residency, and then Wayne Krantz has always had the Thursday. Yeah. Um, and then they mix it up on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. But um, but a lot of the times, the Stearns are on the road, or Wayne's not able there to do it. He's on the road or whatever. So you know it changes all the time. Yeah, so, yeah. But it's it's such a great place, man. That's where that's one of those places where you can really hear some experimental music and people really pushing the envelope and finding finding stuff, man. Yeah. It's so cool to be a part of it and just be there, and witness. That kind of thing, you know. Yeah, because you had said something to me this morning in regards to that modern drummer thing that it had your name on it, so you were the spotlight yeah. for that video. And there's all these cameras moving around, and like you're being captured on a stage like that. And you had said that that brought up some nerves. And uh, I'd like for you to elaborate on that a little bit because even when I was watching you at the Victoria Drum Festival, you really took your time to get in your seat on the throne, make sure your inner in ears are in. And like, you really took your time. You seem so like you're pacing yourself nice and slow and taking your time. And what I wonder is how those nerves in a situation like the modern drummer thing, how that affects your ability to just let go and focus on the moment that you're in. Yeah. I just to elaborate on that, I was, pretty terrified for that modern drummer thing. <laughs> that, that was, you I would guess. You never know it. I don't, it came out in 2005. Was that the year it happened? I, yeah, that I was for the 2005 DVD. I don't think they did one, like the, the one before that might have been 2000, Yeah, I want to say. But um, yeah, like I told you this morning, man, I've just never been in a situation at that time. I had never been filmed like that. And then I knew the audience was all drummers and... and um, and like I said, with the Wayne Kranz trio, we were just used to playing at the 55. You know, we hadn't been mm -hmm. on a bigger stage like that. And, you know, this, there's sound issues and there, there's just a lot going on. You know how festivals go. There's always rush, rush, rush oh, to, the, yeah. to get to the next person. And you're just never really settled. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be professional and deal with what you, what's been put in front of you and make it happen, you know? Right. <laughs> That's just festival syndrome. But... um but I mean, as far as nerves, man, I, I still have that anxious feeling before I go on stage. It's, I think partially it's because I care a lot. I want it to be great. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't want to suck. And I want to give people their money's worth. I want the band to be, you know, it's really up to me for the band to, to feel, uh, you know, for things to feel good. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess you got to be on. So that's part of it. But the other part, I guess, is just it's just kind of that anticipation, knowing it's coming, and it's just like waiting around and, right. um, you know, 
just wait. Sometimes you're waiting around all day to finally go on stage. Like after sound check, you just you have dinner, and then you're just waiting, and um, you just want to get on with it. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's just that that nervous, anxious energy. I've always had it, and then once I get on and start playing, you know, I might, like you said, I was taking my time. That that could have been many factors, but but you know, if 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 I have a second to think about the tempo or think about how I want to start this solo or, or um, just go over something in my head. So I, you know, just so I, I know that I'm on point and, mm-hmm. and uh, I know what I'm going to do. I think that's important to just take your time. Um, I remember seeing Gad do that, just kind of like tapping the tempo, singing, feeling what he's going to play right. before he counts it off. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I learned from stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool just to take your time, you know. I guess in, in the moment it can feel like forever, but it's really just a few seconds. Yeah, you know what silence I mean? freaks people out. Yeah, like if you or I were having this podcast and neither one of us say something for eight seconds, someone's going to crack and say something. Yeah, but silence freaks people out. Right, <laughs> right. And I think like you're, what you're talking about with anticipation. I'd like to throw this scenario at you. You're at fifty-five bar. And it's cooking. That night is just cooking. Everything is on point. You're hitting incredible highs musically with your band. The audience is connecting. There's just this exchange of energy happening between everybody who's in the venue. And then when it's all over, you think, wow, that was like, I got a hit of something with that. Now, that can build up anticipation within somebody, within an artist, where you want to keep recreating that scenario. And sometimes you end up with this good gig meets a bad gig, which then meets another good gig. So have you run into that? And how do you manage all of that? Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of chasing that, that, that high in a way, you know, but it's not relating to any kind of drugs. It's just music can be that can give you that fulfillment. If you, if you reach that, that zone, you know, which can be pretty incredible. And uh, I, I tend to uh, try to get there, but you can't force it. You know, it has uh-huh. to be in the moment. It has to just be one of those magical nights where everyone's communicating and, and things are just gelling the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just have to, instead of beating yourself up, oh, that wasn't my best night or, or whatever, you just have to say, I've just learned over the years, you have to accept it and just say, you know what? People still seem to get something out of it. People still were into it. They were clapping. They, you know, even though you feel like it wasn't your best, it, it served a purpose, you know, and it was cool. Um, sometimes your perspective can be off. You can think it was bad and maybe it was okay, you know. It's, it's one of those things where I just go by the vibe of everyone else around me. And if, if there were some positive things happening, then it was, co- it was a good night. I mean, um, I hope I'm answering your question. But yeah. I, I think that's, uh, you kind of just have to reach a point. Otherwise, you'll just be like depressed if it's not like reaching that plateau every single time. Because it's really impossible. Right. You know? <laughs>